Good evening once again. So it seems that we are few tonight. Okay, so maybe some of uh, those people who are not here are still, you know, Ah, okay, small group, no? And also, maybe some of them have, I don't know, uh, still extended the uh, non-class yesterday. I don't know. So, good evening once again. How are you? Okay. I used to hear, when I, when I, whenever I asked how are you, I used to hear, still alive and kicking, sir, because of Master Guide. So, I'm expecting you to, to answer that, actually. Um, this evening, uh, we will be having actually another special topic and I hope and I pray that after this, we will be having another encounter with Jesus and I fully believe of what our sister said a while ago that there's no rest apart from Christ. There's no rest apart from Christ and actually Christ himself is our fullest rest. Let's pray once again. Heavenly Father, once again, we would like to praise you and thank you for this opportunity of learning from your feet, at your feet. May you help us, O oh Lord, to humbly and teachably listen to you. Take away anything that will hinder us, O oh Lord, to have that encounter with you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. If I'll be asking you tonight, if in case, if in case, no, uh, have mercy, but if in case this building will, you know, will collapse, you no, know, and all of a sudden, all of us here will will die. If I'll be asking you to raise your hand, who among you here are ready for that? Wala. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you are not yet ready to die. <laughs> you know, I remember yesterday, uh, I, went, I went home yesterday in Rizal, and I, I, I rode in, in, in a tricycle. Then the tricycle stopped in one place where an, uh, one of the passengers uh, went down, and I don't know if those two passengers are relative, but what happened is when the first passenger went down, he just, you know, uh, went down and went away immediately. And the other passenger, the other passenger is trying to count her money and trying to find some coins to, of course, to, to pay for, for the fare. Then, after, you know, after uh, having so much time in trying to find some coins, then when he paid the driver, the driver told her, Bayad na po, ma'am. The driver said, it's already paid, ma'am. And I'm, just re I'm reflecting yesterday how many times that we tried to make ourselves righteous, make ourselves ready, when in fact, the only way for us to be ready is to accept the fact that Christ paid it all for us. This evening, I'll be telling you a story. Once again, an encounter in the Bible which talks about death. And I, I know that all of you are familiar with this story. I'm talking about the story of Lazarus. Familiar? This, the title of our story is Four Days Late. It can be found in John chapter 1, verse 11, verse 1 to 45. And it is an encounter at the tomb. Four days late. The story begins in this way. Now, a certain man was ill. He was sick. Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. In verse 2, the author described who, who is Mary and who is Martha. Then in verse 3, it says, So the sisters sent to him, to Jesus Christ, a letter. So they sent the letter to Jesus Christ, 
and the letter contains these words. Lord, He whom you love is ill. Again, we have three observations that we will be studying this evening. And after that, we're done. Next verse. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. The next verse. <laughs> Interesting. Now, Jesus, what's the next word? Love. Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So those siblings, those brother and sisters were so much loved by Jesus and because of that love, it hap what happened next is in verse 5. So, what's the next word? So, what is, what is the meaning of so? Therefore, thus, right? Meaning, there is something before that happened. Why is it that the author is telling us that there is this so, this conclusion? Are you getting the point? It says here, so when he heard, when Jesus heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. What's the reason again? Let's go back to verse 4. Because he loved them. First observation, most of the times, Jesus is late because he loves us so much. And there's no other way for him to show that love other than making himself late. I don't know, but I believe there are a lot of times in our life there might be some of you here struggling with one certain prayer and you're asking, Lord, why is it it takes you too long? But I believe when the answer comes, it is the most loving way for Jesus to show you his grace. He's late. He's four days late because he loves us so much. Second observation. After saying these things, he said to them, to the disciples, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. So this is now one of the truths in the Bible that we should always remember that death for God is not actually death. It's just a sleep, a, sleep, a form of sleep. Um, the reason for that is because later on, God will awaken them. It's either they will be woke up for heaven or they will be woke up for uh, the other place. No? But the point is, all of them, all of the dead persons will be waken up. So that's why the Bible is keep on telling us that death for God is just a form of sleep. And that's why don't believe and never believe that there is this, you know, form of ghost, form of you know, that's why media is very, very influential because of these horror movies that, you know, children are being, uh, being taught that there, is the, there are these monsters, ghosts, and they tend to believe now that they are real. But actually, they're not real. They're just the way of Satan to deceive us. Because why? Because God is telling us that death is just a form of sleep. And there will be a time that all of us, whenever we, we die, all of us will be awakened. And if we believe and accept him, we will be with him for eternity. Now, the disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. So they thought that Jesus is talking about a literal sleep. So what Jesus told them, now Jesus had spoken of his death but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Verse 14. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And verse 15, and this is the second observation, and for what? For your sake, 
I am glad that I was not there. I am glad that I will be late. I am, I am so glad that I will be four days late for your sake. Why? Because I want you to believe. Second observation, most of the times, God is late because He wants each one of us here to believe. There are a lot of times, right, that it seems that our prayer are not being answered, but when it was answered, it gives us more faith than being answered immediately. I don't know in your case, but there are a lot of times that it happened in my life. Third observation. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb how many days? Four days. Next verse. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And take note of this. And many of the who? The Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them, to comfort them concerning their brother. And after that, Jesus came and Martha met him and they had this a little bit conversation and Martha is telling Jesus, Lord, if you were only here four days before, my brother will not die. But Jesus is telling her, I can raise him up. And Martha is telling, telling Jesus, Lord, I believe that you will raise him up, but that will be on the resurrection day. But Jesus is telling, but Jesus is telling her, Martha, resurrection is not about the event. Resurrection is about a person. It is about me. I am the resurrection and life. And most of the times, we tend to doubt God because we are focusing on the event rather than the person who will come. We are focusing on, on what will happen next rather than focusing on a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and, and Jesus telling, telling her, Martha, I am the resurrection and life. Don't be bothered yet with that, with that future event. Yes, that will happen. But right now, that event can happen even right now in your front, before you. Why? Because I am here. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this now? Take note of this. Before we go to the next verse, take note of this. Friends, there is something, a very interesting point in this verse. A while ago, I told you that there are a lot of, what again? J? Jews who came to Martha and Mary. Now, in, in Israel, they are consisted, Jews are consisted of many groups. And two major groups are what they call Sadducees and Pharisees. Now, this is very interesting. Because later on, I will tell you that actually Jesus is, nev is not late. And he is never late. And he was never late. The Pharisees, let's go to Sadducees first. The Sadducees do not believe in resurrection. So when Jesus rose, you you, do you remember the son of Jairus or the daughter of Jairus? When, when Jesus rose her up also from dead or from death rather, actually there are a lot of Jews who do not believe that time that that uh, that daughter or that child was dead already. Why? Because they believe, first, Sadducees do not believe in resurrection. So, whatever Jesus do that time, talaga hindi sila maniniwala. Aside from that, the Pharisees, the Pharisees believes in resurrection. However, if the person was risen three days after his death or her death, that is just a natural resurrection. There is no miracle 
with that. They call that resuscitation. I don't know if that is correct in, in, I don't know, in medical term, resuscitation. And they believe that person can still be re resuscitated after three days. So therefore, for Jesus, for Jesus to meet the need not only of the disciples, not only of the Sadducees, but also of the Pharisees, he needs to be late four days just for them to believe on him. And you know what happened? 11 verse 45 says, Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. You know why? Third observation, because Jesus wants them to recognize him as a God. In the book of John, I, I told you this last night, in the book of John, there are a lot of unique things. And one of the unique things in the book of John is that John is proving to the believers that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. It is only John who recorded that Jesus was with God. Remember John 1.1? 1, 1? And he is actually God. And in verse 14 it says, And the Word became flesh. And we beheld the glory of the Father because of Jesus Christ. And from chapter 1 until chapter 21, there are a lot of verses talking about the divinity, the, the, the godness of God. And you know, this is very interesting because for Jesus to let them know that he is truly a God and he is truly the one whom God sent here on earth, he needs to show them that he is indeed the resurrection and the life. Friends, there are a lot of times that Jesus seems late in, our, in answering our prayers because that is the only time that when he answers, we will recognize him. Sometimes he, he doesn't answer our prayer. Why? Because if he will, he will never recognize him. And for us to recognize him, he makes things seem difficult because it is the only way for us to recognize him as our God. But the fact is, he is never late. And he will never be late. Friends, if there will be one most reason why he was late that time, it is because after being late, that is also the reason that will hasten his death. From chapter 11 of John until chapter 19, the whole book of John talks already about the death of Jesus Christ. Because after the resurrection of Lazarus, the Jews are now trying to kill him because they cannot find any more evidence to prove that he is not God. Because the, the thing that Jesus did is the most, you know, most evident, tama ba yung grammar ko? That is um, the greatest evidence that he could give to them that indeed he is the son of God. And after that, because of pride, what they, what they did is, instead of trying to, you know, counterfeit the evidences that Jesus gave, they are now trying to kill him, to stop him. And you know what? When he was late that time, that was the time he hastened his death to hasten as well our salvation. Friends, if there will be one thing that you need, if, any, if in case this building will collapse and will really, you know, assure you that you are ready to die, it's not because you did something good. It's not because you tried to tell to your parents, Ma, Pa, I love you. It's not because 
You did everything to maximize your time for 24 hours. It is because you have an encounter and an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. This evening, I would like to appeal again. The message is very simple. If there is someone here who would like to stand and tell God, right now, today, tonight, I will stand because I would like to give you my life, accept you as my Savior, because I believe there is no other way for me to have the assurance of eternal life rather than having, other than having a personal relationship with you. If you are that someone, can you please stand wherever you are? Again, I'm asking, if you are that someone, can you please stand? Resurrection is not about being so righteous. Well, in fact, there are a lot of people who was resurrected by who were resurrected by Jesus in his time, and they are not righteous people. If there is one reason again that Jesus resurrected Lazarus, it is because of Lazarus' relationship with Jesus Christ. Because Christ loved him so much. And he loves you so much as well. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, thank you once again for the truth that you had given us this evening. Lord, thank you so much for there are a lot of times that we thought you are late and we could not understand why you are working in those ways. But right now, we understood, O oh Lord, that it's because He loves us so much. And it's because He want, wants us to believe. It's because He wants us to recognize You as our God. Right now, Lord, I would like to plead and pray. We don't know what will happen next in our life. But there will be only one assurance that we could have. And that is the assurance that you had given us 2,000 years ago that in Christ there is resurrection and life. We would like to dedicate and submit our lives to you this evening. And I know, Lord, Satan will again counterfeit this truth because he believes that this truth will bring us to our God. Please, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name, amen.